Thanks for dropping by. This is um, Corey. I'm in my shop. This morning I'm working on a Nakamite FT2. I did some previous videos on the Nakamite FT and the FT2. There's different four changes they made to the camera. I guess you'd call it an upgrade at that time. And um, I thought you might be interested in seeing, um, at least those of you who are interested in film cameras, be interested in seeing what changes they made. And that's what this video is about. And uh, well, let's get started. Where to start, where to start? I guess we'll start with the ASA. Let's see here, let's go to this camera. Here's um, two rings that go to the uh, knocker mat. These are your speed control rings. As you can see the um, different speeds there on the two different rings. One ring of course is for the FT and one's for the FT2. They're pretty close to the same. The um, ASA is on the bottom from the top and I've got it upside down. All right, turn that over. And uh, the ASA stop on the knocker mat was always kind of a pain. They never really worked out the problem they had with it, but um, you have to remember back at this time, people bought a roll of camera, a uh, roll of camera. <laughs> you have to remember back at this time that people bought um, a roll of film and they would stick it in the camera, take a few pictures, wait a week or two, take some more pictures. It wasn't like with the electronic cameras. Since they had a limited amount of frames, they didn't just fire Haley Willie at this and that. They uh, conserved their pictures and uh, were a little more careful with them. And so ASA wasn't a problem. Besides that, there weren't that many ASA films out there. If you look, you'll see it goes 12 to um, 1600. Most people would shoot uh, 100 ASA, 200 ASA, or 400 ASA. Um, those choices, the um, 25 and 50, the film uh, ASAs are a little bit too slow. And uh, 16 was very grainy. So they would shoot uh, in the bracket of 1, 2, or 400. 400 is about the limit for, say, an 8x10 that, uh, where you won't have, grain won't show up. Uh, myself, I always shot 100 ASA. But uh, 200 was also worked fine. So let's look at the two different ones here. This first one here. Switch over here. My uh, Sony is having trouble focusing on these, so I've got it on fixed focus. So it'll occasionally go in and out of focus as I move it in and out. I've got this set on 100 ASA. And I'll show you what the problem was with these cameras. If I can find my probe I'll show <laughs> yeah you can tell I was prepared I've got this set for 100 this is the uh, Nakamat um, FT uh, not the FT2 uh, this was the original this is the one the first one that I bought uh, the Nakamat in uh, Germany and uh, this f-stop setting here is held in place by three, I guess you call them friction clips. And I will get a probe here. You can see here, there's two different rings, inner ring and outer ring. And three different places around this are friction clips. They're just spring-loaded clips. And uh, they hold friction between the two different um, circles. And uh, turn this around here. You can see that's riveted to the inside one. And once you put it in place, all it's holding is there is a friction, but it's a lot of friction. It's too much friction. And when the camera was new, it uh, wasn't that much of a problem to move this with your thumbnail. And that's what most people did. But over time, that clip, the uh, lubricants uh, between the rings kind of dried out and it got harder and harder, where pretty soon you had to use a toothpick. And I'm pressing the two rings together as part of the problem. So there I've moved it to 50. Um, and people really hated that because they couldn't use their thumbnail without breaking it. And they would generally grab a sharp, a sharp object to uh, change their ASA, and that might be a knife blade or some other object, and they would end up scratching the scale 
and uh, most people didn't bother to go get something like a piece of wood, a piece of toothpick or something. And um, let's see if we can go the other way here. And it was just a pain. It was a bad design by Nikon, but they can be excused because we're talking 60s, 70s. And uh, trouble is when I grip this, I'm pressing the rings together. So there we go. Back to like 200. A customer uh, called me and asked me what to uh, use to move that scale, and I told him to just use a toothpick. And um, he uh, didn't do it while he was on the phone, so I don't know after he hung up if he had any luck with it or not. But sometimes these um, two rings, the lubricant in between, can really dry out, and they're really hard to turn. But for most people, if you're using film uh, on a camera, you will set it for one ASA and just leave it there. You rarely change it. Um, most people don't change between different ASA films that often. A professional might, but then a professional will probably be using a professional camera. Okay, let's switch to the other ring. When they went to the FT2, they probably had a lot of complaints. And they decided they were going to fix it, and they did fix it to an extent, but not totally. What they did is, um, I don't know if those, I can't recall if these um, springs uh, that they had in here, they're maybe not springs, but these clips, maybe they released the tension on them slightly or removed them altogether. I don't recall. But what they did do is they put a little... Uh, spring-loaded release here, a latch, that goes in to a set of circles that are along the edge here. And so now you uh, pull this out and you move it again. And again, you're supposed to use your thumb nail, but uh, I still use a toothpick because it, uh, it's pretty stiff. But I suppose I could use a thumbnail if I wanted to. It's a lot better than the old system, but it's also not perfect. They probably needed to fix it, and they didn't want to change the design of the camera too much because it would set up, uh, upset their manufacturing line. And so they just added this, um, like I said, this spring-loaded clip here on the end. And they just pull it out, set your ASA, and then drop it back in. And also, it prevents you from accidentally moving your ASA while you're handling the camera because this is right down here where your fingers touch when you're turning the speeds up here at the top. When you're setting the speeds up here at the top, your other finger is down here at the bottom and it may change the ASA. Although it's the system is so stiff, I never had that problem myself. Anyway, this was the first change, a major change uh, that they made on the Nikomat when they went to the uh, Nikomat FT to the FT2. And that is still a problem today. And I still get calls about it. Generally about the FT, not the FT2. But these rings, like, uh, like I said, they have uh, some uh, clips in here, three. And uh, I don't know about this one, if it has clips there or not. Because it still feels like the clips are in there but they don't feel quite as stiff. I wonder if I can move that with, pull that out. And yeah, I'm using my fingernail to move it. So it's still possible to move it with your fingernail on the FT2 by pulling that out. This is one out of stock. It hasn't been cleaned up or oiled and it's still pretty dirty it's been just laying around it's been laying in a box for probably several decades or more there 50 asa i've used 50 asfl in the past good grain pattern okay let's move on to the next change they made okay the next things they change on the uh nikomite ft2 is the battery they went from a 1.5 volt to a, uh, I mean, excuse me, they went from a 1.35 volt to a 1.5 volt. And it's a different size battery. As you can see here, the uh, 
here's the 1.5 volt S76 and here's the battery compartment for the older um, 1.35 volt 625 maybe we can get a little closer look in here these cameras are a little bit grungy because these are parts cameras these are not customer units there's the compartment as you can see it's pretty large here for the one for the um, 1.35 volt 625 and up here for the newer battery that the uh, compartment they installed is the um, 1.5 volt it's a s76 they either one works fine the uh, meter was calibrated uh, there the galvanometer was calibrated for the new one so there's no difference in quality as far as the metering is concerned let's look at the batteries here are the batteries here is the older yeah, right here here is the uh, Nicromat FT uh, battery 625. Let's see if we can get in a see it picture. Is there a picture of it there? Is there a number? I don't know if the camera will pick it up. Yeah, there it is, right there in the corner. 625. This one right here happens to be a 1.5 volt. I keep both. Here is the older. Um, it's modified, but this is a. Um, 1.35 volt if the customer you see what it says up here mercury free whoop, focus focus yeah mercury free 625 uh, if the customer requests that I put in I set the meter and installed a, one of these if they want the 1.5 I can install it and uh, install those and then of course this one right here you see there it's XL S76 this is for the uh, Nicromat FT2, the new one. I know on the forums they do a lot of arguing about batteries and types, but I assure you that um, a meter, which is a galvanometer, does not care where the voltage it gets comes from, whether it's a 625 or an S76. The uh, battery is always overcharged when you put it in, and it slowly charges down. The uh, meter circuit is supposed to compensate for it, but it doesn't. Possibly on the electronic cameras it does, but uh, on these old mechanical cameras, it may slow it down. It may help, but it doesn't uh, change it. You need to change the battery. Oop, that's going in and out of focus. You need to change the battery once a year, regardless uh, if it's good or bad. The um, You don't want to chance one leaking in your camera and uh, cause an expensive repair charge so whether you're using a nicromat ft or ft2 there's your batteries just install it change it out yearly don't worry about it and uh, let's move on to the next change they made on the uh, ft2 okay the next change they made to the camera was to the uh, pc connectors and to the uh, flash shoe Pull these over here. The um, here on the end. This one here was the um, FT. It had a bulb plug and a flash plug. Bulbs uh, were more commonly used in the 60s. When they got to the 70s, the flash became more prominent, and people had them. And they stopped using the bulbs less expense and so they took the uh, bulb connector off the camera and went to the um, FT2 they went to just straight flash the um, getting back here to the FT on the FT the connectors were in the bolted to the top cover like so but uh, when they went to the FT2 they installed it into the body it's right there you can see screwed in just for flashes, electronic flashes. And uh, top cover just slid over it. The final change they made was um, adding a flash shoe to the camera. If you look at the two one here, you see that the uh, FT2 has a uh, flash connector up on top, flash shoe, which you slid your flash into. And the original FT did not. 
The FT was the one I originally bought in Germany and the one that I used. I preferred the look. A uh, much cleaner top. And um, the flash shoe to me was uh, made it look cheap. I didn't like it. The, um, I suppose the consumers wanted it is the reason they added it, but um, I never used it. Uh, well, later when I did get an FT2, it um, causes red eye when you're taking pictures. The flash is too much of an alignment with the lens, and uh, red eye is a real problem. Plus, it blasts out the face, and the face looks just white, especially around the nose, the brows, and the forehead. And... Um, it wasn't uh, a good solution, although I suppose that for a consumer model, that's what they wanted. So that's what they did. They added it on there. But as you can see, the difference between an FG2 instantly, because one of us flash shoe and one does not. And if you look over there by the um, meter window, you can see a FT, FT2. And that's the difference really between uh, the FT2 and the FT. As far as the two cameras, internally they're identical. The, uh, they use the same shutters. They have uh, identical meters. One does not take pictures better than the other one. They uh, use the same lenses and they have the same shutters, so there couldn't be. Just those four accessories, the ASA, the uh, battery, using a 1.5 volt battery, which was rather handy. You didn't have to hunt down a 625, although 625s were not hard to find. And then the uh, PC connectors on the side and the uh, hot shoe up on top. But those were the four changes they made from one model to the other. And that pretty wraps up the difference between the FT and uh, FT2. Hope you enjoyed that little... Uh, walk down memory lane and um, I'll see you later next time